Hello everybody, this is Abolitionist J with today's vlog. It's currently about quarter to five on July 14th, 2018. Murder Dog and I are currently somewhere in the Mo Shannon State Forest in the uh, western part of Pennsylvania. We got down here yesterday uh, evening-ish and uh, it's been great here so far. Pretty peaceful. Uh, seen a couple of people here and there, but uh, for the most part, we've pretty much been on our own. Uh, since uh, since I recorded last, uh, yesterday before we took off, uh, actually shortly after we left, uh, whatchamacallit, after we left Planet Fitness, we actually ran into our, our new Van Nomad friend who we had just met the other day, the guy who is brand new at this. Uh, we just happened to run into him at a, a deli where we stopped to get some coffee and breakfast. So he and I sat down and chatted for a while. We ended up hanging out on uh, near my tailgate and kind of just hanging out and eating our breakfast and talking and swapping some more stories. And then uh, after we parted ways, it was time for uh, Murder Dog and I to get out of the road. So we loaded up with some gas and uh, took off. Uh, unfortunately, it took us about an hour plus longer than it should have to get here because New York traffic was just, well, it was atrocious. Uh, we... Uh, yeah, they like pretty much every route out of New York had like construction on it, so everything was slowed up. It was kind of miserable. It was uh, it was kind of like in reverse when I came back from uh, my trip to Michigan a couple of weeks ago, where you know as soon as I got into New York, I had that feeling of dread. This was the feeling of dread trying to get out of New York. Uh, once we finally cleared the New York New Jersey border, things started to ease up a little bit, and we were able to cruise pretty much the rest of the way. But like I said, we delayed by about an hour. But either way, we got down here and pretty uh, pretty quickly we learned a valuable lesson uh number one the uh oh, always make sure that you have your route set before you run out of uh, phone service somewhere uh we got a little got, got a little twisted in the back roads a little bit because uh, service dropped out number two always close your windows while driving down a dirt road <sighs> yeah now i grew up in areas like this where there was dirt and gravel roads everywhere but that was before I learned to drive, so I never really got this experience. Oh man, we were, uh, you know, we always drive with the, you know, for the most part, as long as it's not blazingly hot, we drive with the windows open and the tailgate window open to get the airflow going, which I've learned, number one, actually uh, helps with the uh, gas mileage a little bit, and number two, it keeps Murder Dog cool. Well, we had been driving like that all day yesterday, and we got down here, and the last uh, couple of miles on the route that uh, Waze had given me were all back roads of uh, you know dirt and gravel roads leading through the park up into the area that we were trying to get to, uh, or to the forest, rather. <laughs> and so we're driving along and, uh, you know, going like 40 miles an hour through these things, nice, twi you know, beautiful scenery, whatnot. And uh, I keep looking in the rear view, and I see this huge cloud of dust being kicked up behind us. And I'm like, wow, that's, you know, there's an awful lot of dust behind us. And it wasn't until I reached down and, and shifted my hands on the steering wheel and realized that there was this gritty feeling underneath me and said, oh, what the hell? And just looked down, and there was dust everywhere. Yeah, by the time we pulled up, the entire inside of the vehicle was pretty much coated. The dashboard, the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, my seats... Uh, murder dog luckily did not get it that bad because I had, uh, I had actually planned at the last stop we made before we got here when we, when we stopped to get gas to take the towel down that I had hanging up in the back, you know, cause I had taken a shower before we left and I was on my towel rack and I had actually planned on taking it down before we got here. Uh, turns out on one hand, it was good that I didn't. On the other hand, it kind of sucked that I didn't because that ended up covered in dust. But that also meant that Cameron was kind of protected from it. But yeah, everything, the windows, uh, my duffel bag, laundry bag, the, coo the, the electric cooler, everything had a wonderful coat of dust on it. So we ended up having to spend a good hour or so after we got here um, just cleaning out the inside of the vehicle the best we could. Definitely got to be need to be hosed down inside and out before uh, once we get back to Long Island. Uh, gonna have to find a day that it's nice and a place that I could park where I could take everything out of it and then uh, just kind of hose the whole inside down. And it's it needs a wash anyway. But oh yeah, so yeah, definitely a good lesson to learn. Always close your windows on dirt roads. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> So after I finally got that cleaned up somewhat, we ended up, uh, you know, I set up the tent and 
kind of walked around a little bit here where uh where i ended up staying uh there's a there's a dam close by here which has a nice uh right you know next to a nice lake with uh looks like uh, people have put up like a memorial uh, little jetty there where you can kind of sit on and stuff like that very picturesque so we kind of checked that out wandered around a little bit more and then just kind of hung by the campsite for the most part Luckily, the place that I found ended up having not only a picnic bench added already, but also it appears somebody has been building fires here in the past because there was a little mini fire pit kind of built up with rocks and stuff. So it's kind of the perfect place. So set up, you know, set a fire, and just kind of hung out for the rest of the night, made some food and whatnot, listened to some music, and uh, it was quite peaceful. There, there, there's supposedly you know a bunch of different animals out in this region, black bears some kind of coyote wolf hybrid allegedly um uh, i've heard tale of mountain lions and stuff really the only thing i heard last night was a bullfrog although at one point i did take a walk because the other problem here the one problem here is well on one hand it's a problem on the other hand it's kind of a blessing there's virtually no service whatsoever uh so this obviously won't be getting to you guys until uh you know tomorrow sunday night and uh, I'll, be da- I'll, de- I'll be a day behind again on my vlogs but i'll catch up quickly uh, but yeah, there's, there's no mo there's like no mobile data whatsoever. And I, I barely have, I, you know, have to hike around a little bit to be able to find service just to be able to text and make phone calls so I can get in touch with the, with the girls and make, you know, check in with them and make sure they're all right. Uh, which by the way, you know, I, I did speak to them. Uh, I actually, I, you know, I spoke to Jen last night. I spoke to the girls directly today and, you know, they're doing all right. My, uh, my one little one is still kind of sick. So, you know, again, it kind of sucks that I, I'm here without them, but I wouldn't have been able to hang out with them anyway, because they're sick and stuck at home. So, uh, but yeah, f- finding that I, I do have to hike up a little bit up the road, you know, maybe, maybe an eighth of a mile or so to be able to get just enough service to make a phone call. Um, so yeah, so th- it's kind of frustrating on that end, but on the other, on the other hand, it's been great. I mean, I haven't, <clears throat> haven't looked at social media, uh, haven't been able to do anything. Uh, the only thing I am missing is it would be nice to have, uh, to have internet out here just to, you know, go around hiking and stuff to, uh, learn more about foraging and like what kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I'd really like to be able to do like mushroom hunting up here and stuff like that, or just checking out different you know, different species of berries and whatnot. And I'm not the greatest with that yet. Uh, I am learning. And, uh, you know, it's nice to have a little uh, handy, uh, you know, I, I guess I could bring a book with me, but I didn't think of that ahead of time. It would have, you know, to ha- to be able to go to the internet quick and say, hey, is this thing poisonous? Can we eat it? <laughs> what, will we die? <laughs> that would be nice. Um, but other than that, it's, you know, it's very peaceful. And, you know, just like, uh, just like being in Michigan, being out here, virtually no light pollution whatsoever so last night beautiful night with the stars out and everything uh you know it was a pretty it was pretty beautiful when i woke up today too unfortunately uh looks like some it's gotten overcast at this point i ended up i just uh, woke up from a nap a little while ago (laughs) and all of a sudden it's kind of overcast but it's still nice out you know not too hot you know a nice little breeze going through last night like i said was uh was a beautiful night uh the only time i really heard tell of any any bigger animals than a bullfrog was when I was making my phone call to check in with the girls last night. And uh, towards the end of it, I was getting ready to go anyway. And all of a sudden I heard some uh, snapping twigs uh, in the, in the, in the, in the woods off to the, off to the left of us. And it definitely sounded bigger than a bullfrog or a chipmunk or, uh, anything like that. So Cameron and I kind of hightailed it back to the, uh, camp area where we had the fire going just in case, uh, you know, I do have some protection on me, but, uh, you know, I'd rather not chance running into a black bear in the middle of the night on a very dark road with no lights and whatnot, you know, other than my little headlamp thing that I had on. Uh, but yeah, you know, once I got back to the camp, didn't hear anything from any, uh, like I said, other than a bullfrog at one point <laughs> off in the distance down by the lake. But it was just remarkable too, because, uh, I kind of forget being up there on Long Island where everything is just so messed up with all the people on top of each other and all the light pollution, which, which even throws the animals off because it was the first time in a long time that I can, I can't actually the first time since I can even remember where I was able to lay down at night and just listen and hear virtually nothing other than that bullfrog every once in a while and didn't hear anything from like the birds or whatnot until the sun actually started to come up (laughs) back on Long Island the birds are so confused with all the light pollution and stuff. They chirp most of the night. You know, they'll start up, you know, they'll quiet for a while and then they'll start up again at like one, two o'clock in the morning and just go the entire night through. They're confused. Out here, 
even the animal circadian rhythm, I guess, is, is better or whatever that crap is. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, they were quiet. It was really peaceful last night, almost too peaceful. Um, but, yeah, uh, ended up waking up early again, even though I you know, was out in a tent in, <laughs> in, instead of being cramped up in my car for once. Um, but, uh, you know, didn't matter. Got up, had some coffee, uh, had a little food. And then because it was so nice and, uh, a nice out, ended up having, uh, doing some, finally, finally getting around to doing some yoga again. Cause my back was a little stiff. I think it was just the transition from being into the car to all of a sudden being able to stretch out again. My body was just like, what the hell are you doing to me, man? So got some of that in and, uh, hiked around a little bit, went down to the lake today with, with murder dog. And we wandered around. Uh, I have kept her on leash for the most part here because that is one of the rules and, you know, don't really want to bother anybody, uh, you know, when, when, when I don't see anybody else around, like hanging out the campsite, she's obviously not on a leash, she's just, actually she's currently sleeping over by the campsite, it's been a, been a rough day for her, we went for a hike, she's kind of wiped out, but yeah, it's been, like I said, it's been really nice here, and uh, other than uh, my learning experience with the Dust Bowl, um, everything's been going pretty well, and uh gonna kind of you know hate to leave here <laughs> it's it's so nice but uh since i survived the night and didn't have any animal attacks or anything uh i i definitely would like to bring the uh, come back here again at some point and bring the kids and uh you know although I, when i talked to him today i did try to tell him you know it's great here it's pretty you know i think you girls are like it and you know i did have to tell them because they're, they're always worried about things like this that there are a bunch of bugs that's one thing they would have to contend with i kind of forgot being away from pennsylvania so long that i think the daddy long legs the uh, type of spider i think they're like the state uh, animal of pennsylvania <laughs> because they are just everywhere out here and obviously if you don't know anything about them they're like the least dangerous spider in the world they just look kind of freaky because they have those really long legs and, uh, you know, tiny little brown or black bodies. Um, and, of course, my girls are freaked out by spiders, so they don't understand. But, you know, I tried to explain to them, oh, they're harmless. But, yeah, they are kind of everywhere. Left the uh, tent door, uh, tent flap open at one point yesterday. Kind of forgot about it. Went into the tent. They were all over the inside of the tent. So I kind of had to shoo them all outside because, well, they're not dangerous or anything. Still is kind of freaky to wake up and have one, like, crawling across your face. So, um, but, yeah, like I said, other than that, it's been uh, it's been really nice here. And uh, I would definitely uh, recommend people come to check it out. Uh, we didn't find any of the hiking trails per se, although there is a there's a district office like four miles back towards the uh, towards the highway where I'm sure I could get a trail map or something. But this whole uh, whole area just seems to be interspersed with you know dirt and gravel roads that just travel in all these different directions. There are cabins. We did stumble across a couple of cabins that people look like they're renting out and stuff like that. Um, those obviously I'm guessing require reservations and some money, but you know, just being, just, uh, camping out here is, uh, is free. I think there's supposed to be something about a permit or something, but nobody's bothered us. We haven't, like I said, we've seen some people and everybody out here is so friendly. Everybody who drives by, you know, waves as they're driving by, which, uh, you know, something again, I'm not used to coming from New York where everybody, usually if it's a wave, it's this type of one. So, <laughs> but yeah, so Anyway, I did uh, I did say I was going to keep trying to record stuff. I took some pictures today. Got some kind of, I'm hoping they, uh, I didn't even look at them yet. I'm hoping they came out. Some cool uh, nature shots, you know, and cool little spider web I found this morning as we were walking around. A couple of different, uh, you know, flowers with butterflies all over them and stuff. And, you know, just nature stuff. It's uh, It's good to get back to this. So with that, I think I'm going to sign off. Like I said, it's uh, almost five o'clock, so it's still pretty, pretty early here. You know, I'll go uh, wake up old murder dog, see if she wants to move around a little bit, maybe. And, you know, end up making some dinner, probably set a fire again. Oh, that's right. The other thing, I finally got to test out the solar shower in the correct fashion. Uh, as I've talked about in the past, the only time I've used it so far, I ended up taking what I refer to as a lunar shower because, number one, it was at night, and I didn't give it the, the bag a chance to warm up or anything. It was just a cold-ass shower, uh, which was invigorating but uh a little chilly um <laughs> today i actually remembered to set the bag uh, fill the bag up with water and set it out in uh, once the sun started coming up over the trees set the sun set the bag out and left it there for a couple hours ended up getting up close to 120 degrees by the time i actually set it up to take a shower it, it had dropped a little bit because i moved it and the shade uh, shade came in and uh so i think it dropped down to like i think it said like 106 or 108 it was still pretty hot. Uh, so 
the shower i'm gonna i'll do a full review on that at some point uh because like i said a lot of these products that i've picked up i do want to do reviews on um and put them out there and let people know uh i'm definitely uh i'm a fan of the water pressure the as i've said before the only thing with this thing is you you, you need to find a, a high enough place to hang it from because if it's if it's not hanging high enough the water pressure isn't the greatest uh unless it's kind of coming straight down the tube at you but when that happens it comes out pretty darn strong and like I said, came out pretty darn hot today. It didn't take very long to heat up either. You know, I threw like a couple of gallons in the bag, and it was up to 110 degrees in, I don't know, an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was nice. So it was, it was nice to get, you know, clean and whatnot because you, you do get kind of, you know, aside from the dust <laughs> that I was covered in, you just get dirty in general, hang out in the woods. So that was nice. Uh, only complaint I really have about that the shower is the fact that the shower head, the uh, kind of flimsy uh, ho- hosing they use to connect it to the bag itself doesn't stay on that. I mean, it stays on, but you can't really pull on it at all. You have to be extremely gentle when moving the shower head around. Otherwise, the hose just pops off and just water pours out the bottom. So I may try to find a way to like maybe build a little, um, you know, clamp or something to put on there to keep it on there a little tighter. Um, but that's really, <clears throat> that's really the only complaint. The bag itself is very sturdy. Um, I dropped it a couple of times, no punctures or anything like that. And like I said, as long as you find a way to hang it up, that's, that's the only other problem is because there's, there's a lot of trees out here with a lot of, uh, branches that are, you know, lower branches that were broken off. So there's just little pieces of them, which almost a perfect height to hang it from, but then you have to get, <coughs> excuse me, that just came out of nowhere. I apologize. Uh, you have to get, uh, close enough, uh, to, if, you know, you want, if I actually want to use the shower or a stall that I put purchased with it, um, you know, trying to get it close enough to the tree where the thing can actually, the shower head can actually hang inside is a little bit tricky because the ground's a little uneven out here, but I found a place to make it work. I ended up having to hang it from a higher branch because all the branches that were, looked like they could be just high enough ended up being a little too low. So I had to go, go up to a higher branch and kind of hang it with a bungee cord from that. But it worked out, so I'm definitely a fan of the shower. I think it was a good investment. Now that I finally gotten to use it, uh, I'm gonna try again. I'll, I'm gonna load it up with water tonight and leave it out, and hopefully it'll get uh, it'll be sunny enough and warm enough tomorrow to heat up before I uh, want to get headed out of here. So I can another take another quick shower and uh, then put everything away, and uh, then we'll head back to New York. Um, probably gonna do that sometime, like you know, early mid afternoon ish. And, you know, depending on what time I actually get out of here, um, hope, you know, if I get home early, if I get back to Long Island early enough, maybe I'll be able to see the girls. But again, it's going to depend on how my, how my little one's feeling. So I'll check out with them again tonight and tomorrow morning and see how she's feeling. And, you know, if she's, if they're up to coming out, maybe I'll try to race home. Um, cause like I said, without traffic, it should only be about, you know, I think it's supposed to be like five hours, a little over five hours to get out here. But yeah, that's about it. So like I said, been having a good time. I think Murder Dog's having a good time. She she seems to love being out in the woods. She loves uh, usually loves sleeping in the tent. Although today she you know the, since last night and today she was more she was m- much more happy just to find a soft spot in the grass and just pass out there for an hour or so. So it's been pretty nice. Well, again with that I'm going to sign off. But thank you everybody as always for watching. This has been Abolitionist Jay, and uh, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace, y'all.